Welcome. So what does make you think that the solar system is warming up? This is part two of a lecture I gave to the Hampshire Astronomical Group a couple of weeks ago. The link to part one is listed in the description box below. This part deals with the inner solar system. The planets Mercury, Venus, the Moon and Mars. I'll go through each one of the planets in turn, detailing all the reasons why some people think that that particular planet is warming. We'll assess the evidence and see whether indeed they are right or indeed they are wrong. First we'll start with Mercury. There are three reasons given by those that have the hypothesis that the whole solar system is warming for the perception that Mercury is undergoing global warming. The first of these is that Mercury has developed a magnetic field since Mariner 10 visited it in the mid-70s. The second is that Mercury has suddenly formed a comet-like tail that changes continuously. And the third is that there is ice forming in the polar regions of Mercury. Let's take a look at each one of these in turn and see whether they are scientifically correct. Let's first take a look at the claim that Mercury has a new magnetic field. Indeed, the MESSENGER mission has made new observations of Mercury, including its magnetic field. However, in 1973, Mariner 10 also measured Mercury's magnetic field and got a very similar value to that of MESSENGER. Thus, the magnetic field is not new. Another thing that's glossed over in this particular argument is why would warming a planet with a surface temperature of 650 degrees centigrade by 1 or 2 degrees centigrade create a magnetic field? That one perplexes me. Next, let's deal with Mercury's comet tail. Indeed, Mercury does have a comet-like tail, as can be seen here in this image from the stereo spacecraft. That is because it has a magnetic field and so generates a magnetosphere just like the Earth does. It changes because of the solar wind. However, it has been known about for decades. In the bottom right you can see how some ultraviolet pictures show how much it changes. But there again, the question would be, why would a few degrees of global warming on Mercury cause it to form a magnetosphere? But that doesn't make sense. Speaking of not making sense, then there's the argument that Mercury is forming an ice cap because it's globally warming. The presence of ice on Mercury is inferred from radar sounding. Water ice is highly reflective and some areas near the polar regions of Mercury are highly reflective too. It has been pointed out that some of the craters, both near the North and the South Poles, are so deep that they are in permanent darkness. And ice could be deposited there by comets crashing into Mercury on their way towards the Sun. However, it should be stressed that there is no direct evidence of water been found. The high radar reflectivity could be caused by some other uh, substances like metals or sulfides and things of that sort, which are much more likely to be found on a planet like Mercury. And they gloss over the point of why would new ice caps form on a planet that is globally warming. So I think it's safe to conclude that there's no viable evidence that Mercury is warming. Some of the supposed evidence is from misinterpretation of published papers. Other so-called evidence has no physical or logical connection between the observation and, and the conclusion that Mercury is undergoing global warming. However, it should be stressed that there is no evidence that Mercury is not warming. The temperature change would be so small compared with the ambient temperatures it would be hard to measure with our current instruments. And we have no long-term records of the planet's climate. Just because you can't prove it isn't warming doesn't mean that it is warming. Clearly what is happening here are some folks are trying to use any differences or any changes or any new observations of Mercury to argue that the planet is exhibiting signs of global warming. That of course is not a valid scientific approach. So for the very first planet that we look at, we find that the arguments fail. Next we turn our attention to Venus. For all intents and purposes, Venus is our twin. Although it is closer to the Sun, it has a very high albedo and so its net absorption of energy is almost identical to that of the Earth. Yet it has the highest surface temperature of any planet in the solar system. That is the result of a very dense, thick layer of carbon dioxide, which makes up most of its atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and traps most of the sun's heat inside the planetary atmosphere, so it gets hotter and hotter. Perhaps the original Venusians didn't pay any attention to their climatologists when they warned them about burning fossil fuels. So what is the evidence that supports the claims that Venus is warming? There are two pieces of evidence that are regularly cited to support the claim that Venus is warming. The first is that they've discovered massive thunderstorms on Venus that have not been seen before. The second is that Venus's atmosphere is turning back into oxygen. So let's take a look at each of these claims and see whether there is any truth to them. First we'll look at the claim that lightning has been discovered on Venus. 
The Venus Express mission, which is run by ESA, has indeed monitored lightning on the dark side of Venus. And this is claimed as a new discovery. This discovery is important from a global warming point of view because it's very similar to results that we, as we shall see later, for the, some of the gas giants, where new storms seem to have sprung up. And the explanation is that the planets are warming as a result. Well, this would all be very fine if indeed this was a new discovery. However, it isn't. No one thought to ask why the Venus Express would be carrying instruments that are capable of detecting lightning if they weren't expecting to see lightning on the planet. The reason why they flew such instruments was the Russian Venera 9 and Venera 10 spacecraft detected radio bursts reminiscent of those from lightning here on Earth. That discovery was made in the 70s. So the Venus Express result is not a new discovery or a new set of storms, but confirmation of an observation from a long time ago. And we have no indication that there weren't lightning storms on Venus for billions of years. So this particular claim doesn't seem to hold water. So let's next turn to the claim that Venus's atmosphere is turning back into oxygen. I was unable to find a scientific paper that actually said that this was the case, let alone a result of global warming. The original claim said that there was much more oxygen than the models predicted, and it was much more variable. I did find a paper by the Venus Express science team saying that they discovered that the hydroxyl radical was far more prevalent and highly variable than was expected. So maybe those claiming that Venus's atmosphere is turning back into oxygen got the hydroxyl radical mixed up with the oxygen molecule. The point about the hydroxyl radical is it's very reactive and in fact actually acts to stabilize the carbon dioxide atmosphere by preventing anything reacting with the carbon dioxide to create carbon monoxide and oxygen. So this particular claim seems to go against the rules of basic chemistry and so it doesn't seem to be scientifically valid. So neither piece of evidence that Venus is warming seem credible. They seem to be based on the misinterpretation of published results. However, just like Mercury, there is no evidence that Venus is not warming. But the temperature is so extreme at the surface, and the surface is so impenetrable, we wouldn't be able to tell if Venus is warmed by a couple of degrees or not. And we have no long-term record. But you can't claim that something is warming just because you can't prove it isn't. So I think that pretty much closes the case for Venus too. Next we turn to the Moon. This is very critical to both sides of the argument. The anthropogenic global warming forces and the solar theory of global warming forces. The Moon, of course, is at the same distance on average from the Sun as the Earth is. And having no atmosphere and no oceans, the Moon should respond to changes in the Sun much more promptly and much more completely than the Earth should. If the Moon is warming, that would at least imply in part that there must be some similar influence warming the Earth. However, if the Moon is not warming, and the Earth we know is, then that would imply that the source of the warming is internal to the Earth rather than an external force like the Sun. So what's the evidence that the Moon is warming? It is this graph here. It shows the results from a series of temperature monitors left on the Moon by the Apollo astronauts. The high frequency changes are the lunar month, the longer term modulation is the year, the Earth and Moon getting closer and further away from the Sun, as we discussed in Part 1. When the Earth-Moon system is at perihelion, nearest to the Sun, it'll get more heat and light than it does at aphelion, so the temperature will go up, and conversely will go down at aphelion. We can eliminate these cyclic effects by smoothing over them. When we do that, we find that all the sensors, from one third of a meter below the surface to one and a third meters below the surface, show a steady rise after they initially settle down. This implies that there's warming going on. Now you would have no idea how long it took me to find where this graph came from, because none of the sites that use this argument gave any references. It turns out that it's figure two from a paper entitled Apollo Lunar Heat Flow Experiments and the Lunar Constance Orbiter Definer Radiometer by Siegler et al. published in 2010. The paper turns out to be intercalibration problems between different types of sensors. How you can use one type of sensor and models to predict what another type of sensor would produce. In the paper it explains that this drift is likely due to the way that the astronauts set up the experiment. 
We'll also notice that on the graph, they didn't give a date. They just showed four years worth of data. When you read the paper, they give the dates. And the, this data was taken between 1970 and 1974. But that is a time when the anti-anthropogenic global warming lobby claimed that the Earth was actually cooling. And in fact, I've marked that period when these observations were taken on this plot here with the light blue vertical line. And you can see at the very best, Earth temperatures were basically level. So what can we conclude from all of this? Once again, the evidence presented for the moon warming is a result of a gross misinterpretation of the published results. Further, we have infrared radiometer measurements of the moon for over 30 years, and you can conclude from that data that the moon is not warming. Here again we have a claim of solar system warming that is proved false. But last but not least, we turn to Mars. And this is the big one, because this is the one that everybody goes to first as claiming that there is global warming going on there. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time looking at the various pros and cons of this particular planet. There are four basic reasons why people think that Mars is warming. One, there's been recently active water channels. Two, you can see water seeping from inside of some of the craters. Three, Mars's albedo is changing. And four, the southern polar ice cap is melting. So we'll go through each of these in turn and see what the evidence is for and against this conclusion. There is lots of evidence around Mars that there at one time there was running water there. For example, this beautiful valley. Obviously there was a source region of some water at the left hand side of this picture and it ran down the slope onto a plain on the right. Now the trouble is that when geologists say that this happened recently they're generally talking in terms of millions of years, not in the last few decades, and certainly not in the last 30 years. Perhaps missions like the Mars Global Surveyor and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter can provide examples of more recently running water. And to that end, we have seen pictures like these. Inside some craters and on certain slopes, you can see dark lines running down the sides of the craters. It looks remarkably like water flowing down the side of a hill. There are two particular nice examples here. On the left we have a shallow crater and there are six dark lines stretching from just below the surface level down to the bottom of the crater. And there are some smaller ones that don't reach all the way down. And on the right we have a long slope with a scarp at the top of it. Then there's something that looks remarkably like what you would imagine a water flow would be like on Mars. And there are, some, again, some smaller examples further along the slope at the bottom of the picture. So this is really exciting stuff. But the question is, what is it? And is it water? There are many hypotheses as to what causes these shapes. One group fiercely advocates that it is indeed water. Others claim that they are likely to be mineral deposits, shadows, or the results of dust and sand avalanches. Here's a picture of one of those avalanches down a steep cliff. You notice at the bottom of the avalanche is left a pattern of dark and light lines. I was surprised to find out that the various Mars surveys have captured several of these, so these seem to be quite regular occurrences on the surface of Mars. The water explanation for these phenomena seems to be in the minority, but that does not mean that they are not correct. However, uh, there are several pieces of evidence both for and against that one must consider. The evidence for it being water is that these are relatively recent changes. Sometimes old survey pictures do not show these features, whereas new survey pictures do. Against it is the fact that water can't exist for very long on the surface of Mars. First of all, it's exceedingly cold there, and as soon as it touched any rocks or the air, it would freeze, and then sublime away. So for it to flow any distance, the water would have to be very hot. More importantly, a few degrees of global warming will not get the water hot enough to flow any distance on Mars. Besides, to turn the ice on Mars into water, you would have to have many hundreds of degrees of warming. And again, that cannot be the case for simple solar-driven global warming that's causing just a less than one degree change here on the Earth. The third reason for believing that Mars is global warming that is often given is that Mars's albedo has changed. Here are two pictures of Mars taken many years apart. And the thing you're comparing here is the southern hemisphere, the bottom of each picture. You can see that the lower part of the picture has darkened significantly. The argument that usually is given is that Mars is undergoing global warming. 
that in turn is melting ice which darkens the soil lowers the albedo absorbs more energy and warms the planet more so you have this vicious feedback cycle this particular argument often quotes a source of Fenton et al a paper written in 2007 entitled global warming and climate forcing by recent albedo changes on Mars and so they say see there the scientists themselves saying there's global warming going on on Mars if you read the title and more importantly if you read the abstract you'd see that that's not the point at all the title says global warming and climate forcing by recent albedo changes on Mars the climate change is being caused by the albedo change the paper actually cites dust storms as the original cause of the albedo change not the Sun so let's see if the melting of the southern polar ice cap will change our fortunes the crux of that case centers around pictures like these this is a picture of a very small part of the southern polar ice cap taken during two successive Martian summers and you can see by comparing the two pictures that the craters look slightly larger and some of the features have seemingly eroded away in this next frame I've outlined some of the craters on the right hand side of the 2001 picture and transferred those exact shapes over to the 1999 picture if you look carefully you can see indeed that some of the craters are larger in 2001 than they were in 1999 but is this evidence of warming or just a normal process I believe it's just a normal process you have to remember that the Martian summer is twice as long as ours it goes on for six months and in the southern polar regions that means the Sun will be in the sky for six solid months and will rotate around the horizon the full 360 degrees rather like this movie of the midnight Sun taken in our Arctic regions but how does that affect depressions like these well in the polar regions the Sun is coming at a low angle and off flat ice it will merely be reflected back into space however if there's a depression in the ice the solar rays hitting the face of the depression will heat it disproportionately to the rest of the ice and so it will melt quicker and over time the boundary will move further and further back as the Sun rotates through 360 degrees in the sky each vertical face of the cliff will be exposed to it in turn making the depression steadily larger over time is just a phenomenon peculiar to the polar regions of Mars to balance the case out a bit there's even evidence that Mars is cooling we heard in part one that the total solar radiance may actually have declined over the last 30 years which would mean that Mars should be cooling and to support that surface measurements from old spacecraft seem to be systematically higher than the modern measurements however I don't think that that's particularly strong evidence because you're dealing with instruments with different sensitivities and different calibrations so to summarize the situation with Mars there has been some warming in the distant past but not on the same time scale as the Earth's other pieces of evidence have perfectly reasonable alternative explanations and the issues are not settled yet some of the warming that is seen is not global and much of it is a misinterpretation of the published results so again I think Mars fails the scientific test for proving that there's global warming going on there so our scorecard for the inner solar system is unimpressive the evidence that is often cited to support the claim that these planets are warming is generally shown to be false or a gross misinterpretation of published results none of the effects can be attributed to the Sun and many of them have no connection between the observation itself and the conclusion that the planet is warming in many cases we have insufficient evidence to be able to tell whether a planet is warming or cooling in section 3 we will be dealing with the gas giants and some of their moons in the description box below I've set links to the other parts of this video and also timing of some of the subsections so if you want to look up a particular planet or a particular aspect of the argument then you can go straight to that rather than having to listen through the whole thing so that's it for today keep safe bye for now